Yeah, we think the pandemic is over, some do, right? But apparently the pandemic's not over with us. More than two years into the COVID-19 pandemic, now new research finding that repeatedly catching the virus increases a person's chances of facing new health problems. Those infected with COVID more than once also had higher risk for heart problems, diabetes, and fatigue. The findings come amid a fresh wave of coronavirus variants. Here to help us make sense of it all is Dr. Amish Adalja, an infectious disease expert with Johns Hopkins University. Dr. Adalja, good to see you this morning. Thanks for having me. All right, this is a lot to take in here. First, let's start with the most, the dominant variant right now. This is the, the BA5, I think. And this one seems to be um, maybe a little more elusive of the vaccine, right? And not really mattering if you've had it before. Exactly. What BA5 has are mutations that get around some of the protection from prior infection, including prior Omicron infections, as well as the vaccines. But it's really important to remember that it's kind of not all or nothing because you're still likely to be protected against serious illness, hospitalization and death if you're someone that's been vaccinated uh, against COVID with the original version of the uh, vaccine. So I think we, we have to expect that there's going to be more variants that are able to do this. And the key thing is making sure people are protected against serious disease. And so, you know, just like like, I mean, you can get the flu more than once, right? There might be years you get it and years you don't get it, and you may get the flu vaccine and, and still get it. But what we usually saw with that is that once you've had it, you know, your body kind of learns how to fight it, right? So it's not as serious as what it could be. But this new study is a little alarming because it's showing that that may not be the case with COVID. Am I reading that correctly? Well, what that study shows is that it's better to not get a second infection. The second infections aren't always going to be benign. That if you're somebody that got infected and then gets infected again, many people will do okay. But there are some people, especially those described in the study, who are veterans that are probably in, the, in their 60s was the average age in that study, who have comorbidities. Those reinfections aren't necessarily going to be easy on everyone. And I think that's important. If you're a high-risk person, you need to stay up to date on your vaccines. You've got to have a plan for Paxlovid or monoclonal antibodies. And I think it all underscores the fact that we need a better vaccine, one that doesn't have this problem of breakthrough infections as common. So maybe a universal coronavirus vaccine is something we really should be investing in. So for those people that are in that category, if you get COVID multiple times, is it saying that the, the risk is kind of cumulative, right? It, it can actually increase and maybe even with the long COVID. There are some, it, it, that's one of the implications that if you, for example, don't have long COVID after your first infection, there's still some risk that you might get it after your second infection. But the thing about this study is we have got to make sure that we extrapolate it appropriately to the general population, because right. again, it's a good study. It's done in the veterans in, in with veterans. So that's not going to be the same thing for a 20 year old with no medical problems versus the average veteran who likely is above 60 has diabetes, high blood pressure, maybe overweight, all of those types of things are gonna be cumulative with these second infections. So the, the key thing is you don't want to get a second infection. They're going to be common uh, with this virus, but it's not something you should go out and seek because it's not always going to be benign. For it's the most part, it usually- I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but as I'm, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking about this, you don't wanna get a second COVID just like in theory, you don't wanna get strep throat or you don't wanna get, a, you know, you don't wanna get sick. You should do everything that you can to try to stay healthy. Do you find, I mean, you know, there are some people that are still paralyzed with fear when it comes to COVID. Do you find when studies like this kind of come out, it, it kind of keeps that fear going and that's why it's so important to really understand what the study's saying? Exactly. I think there are a lot of people who haven't acclimatized to the fact that the post-pandemic world is not going to be 2019. It's going to be a world in which COVID-19 is a, an ever-present threat, but a manageable threat because of vaccines, monoclonal antibodies, antivirals, and rapid tests. But the virus is not going to go magically back into bats. People have to learn how to risk calculate. They have to acclimatize to it. And we also have to continue to develop new technologies, better vaccines. So this becomes less and less of a threat. But the major threat that COVID-19 posed was its ability to overrun hospitals and cause uh, hospitals to run out of capacity. That threat is no longer present anymore because of the immunity in the population and the tools we have. So how important at this point then is herd immunity or is are we living in a world where you're just gonna continually have to get a booster? Herd immunity is difficult with this virus because it continues to mutate to be able to infect us. And it comes from a family of viruses that do that all the time. We've all had multiple other coronavirus infections. So I don't think when we think about herd immunity, it's not gonna be the traditional herd immunity. It's gonna be more about 
immunity against getting severe disease, hospitalization, and death. So uh, whether or not we need to continue to boost, I think, remains to be seen. I think we're still having that discussion about what the optimal vaccination policy may be. Are we trying to prevent severe illness or all illness? And I think with the current generation of vaccines, even if they're updated, they're not necessarily going to be able to stop all infections. So this goes back to what I was saying earlier, that a universal coronavirus vaccine, one that targets some part of the virus that doesn't mutate that much, that's really the holy grail here. And there are companies that are going into clinical trials with them. That's good. That's good and promising for sure. Everything about COVID has been non-traditional. <laughs> Dr. Dalja, thank you so much. Really appreciate you always putting it in perspective for us.